Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TRS Live with your hosts, Brian Keller, Matt Trotz, and Zach Hoffman, presented by The Real Shot. I'm going to do this here forever. EQ. Forever. Try your Forever. Yeah. Forever. I'm going to do this here forever. All you hate is bad to get comfy This the day you've been waiting on Y'all road is finna get bumpy This the track I'm making my statement on I ain't going nowhere This the place that I'm making home I'll do this shit forever Hit the gas and I'm taking off I was born with passion My job is never ending And my hustle's everlasting No matter what, I'm gon' ball Even with my back to the wall And the best part is that this is the beginning I'ma do this here forever Forever. What is good, Zach? Lots of good stuff, actually. Is today Wednesday or Thursday? It's Thursday. Well, uh, you know what that means? Tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. You know, it's taken a li- little bit of uh, getting used to this new schedule, but I like it a lot better. Yeah, I like it too. It gives us a lot of time yep. to get prepared and do a lot of cool stuff. Yep. And we, we work out the, the bugs of everything and uh, a little more time to prep and prepare and all that kind of cool stuff. So thanks to everybody who has joined in or is about to join in. We are here at TRS Live. Again, we are absent of Brian Keller. He's on a bus. I can't remember where the heck he's got to go, but... He had a doubleheader today for baseball. Oof. So he was supposed to be here, and unfortunately his bus is leaving shortly here, and they got a big old doubleheader today. So good luck to win a county baseball team. Hopefully they can bring home the W. W. So yeah. it's a doubleheader is just a back-to-back game, right? Yep. Awesome. Yep. Not huge into sports. We all know that. So that's Ooh. That's different. Yeah, it's so what from what I understand was happening is they were they played the same team so let's say again so I think they went there Wednesday. Okay. And they got this place wherever it is, I I'm he maybe he'll comment <laughs> on here. It was like an hour and a half bus drive. Oh sure. And so they get down there, they get all the way there and this team's field is not ready to go. Oh. So they're like, What do you mean? We're like well, we got hard rains. They're like, Yeah, okay, then you gotta call the game off. And so they never called the game off, and so they had to literally got right back on the bus, drove all the way back, and now they have to go down there again today for a doubleheader. So that's a real bummer. You know what else is a real bummer? <sighs> what else? <sighs> Every day, man. Every day. So now we're perfect streaming. So anyone watching right now, if we cut out for a second there, as we all know, every day likes to have a little bit of a technical challenge. Oh, and nice. And even after our good technical difficulties meeting yesterday, yeah. now it's definitely nobody's fault but live stream studios because they apparently think that our 50 megabyte upload speed is not fast enough for uploading today. I mean, we've never even had that happen before. So thank you, Internet Provider. I won't name any names, Spectrum. Um, <laughs> but anyways, so it looks like, we're, we're, it looks like we're, we're back and we're good. Okay. It probably just cut out for a so second. That, that little death spin that's happened every once in a while, that's what we got to yep, happen? That, that just happened. I mean, that's just the Internet doing its thing. So sorry for that, guys. Um, but, yeah, anyways, so they got down there. No... Yeah, no bueno. So they couldn't play it, and now they're. Is it just gonna keep doing it or? No, what? no. I I mean, if it does, then we're just gonna have to make a couple phone calls. You know, crap, crack a couple <laughs> skulls. You know. Yeah, but well, uh, either way, <laughs> either uh, way. So today's episode. <laughs> so today's episode is you and I literally just goofing off. Um, what what I did is I went through, and we've always talked about doing some YouTube video type thing. Like right, we, we produce YouTube videos. But we wanted to just always see what everybody else is up to or just, you know, wh- I always see a lot of younger generation. They always surf in the, the websites and YouTube and all that kind of stuff, just watching random videos. So Brian brought to the idea, he's like, let's just watch some YouTube videos and see some really cool, interesting outdoor related stuff. Right. So the first couple of videos we're going to have is has to relate to all this awesome stuff that's sitting in front of me here. We just found some, uh, you know, some current interesting type um product reviews that guys whether it's their the actual company themselves or some guys who maybe have no merit at all are talking about it and so 
the first couple are like we trying to talk about the TSS, the federal TSS ammunition, which is way more complicated than I want to ever get into. But it's it's just a really high end ammunition and mostly for Turkey world. But right. this the first video, you know, when we get into that here in a second, we'll talk TSS, and then they're also gonna. And then we have a hunt. Where then out of the, do they use the TSS ammunition for turkeys? Sure, but then they also use the Mossberg here. This is the Mossberg 500 um, 410 shotgun. So for in the world of anybody who is a turkey hunter, we've always talked. To, you know, you're always taught that 12 gauge, you know, three three and a half inch shells. Let's whammy slammy them, drop them in their tracks. Well, the new thing now is light recoil. You know, lightweight guns, a 410. Right, and you combo this with the TSS ammunition, and they're they're saying you can get. I know Mark had uh, some some notes. So like, in the uh, in the what is this? This is the this is a nine shot, three inch nine shot. It's a thirteen sixteen ounce, and there's over three hundred pellets or right around three hundred BBs just in this small bullet alone. Right. And um, when they shot it at 40 yards, one of the I posted a video yesterday f- to our Facebook page from Scout Look. Okay. And that's the guys that are going to talk about this as well. But this little guy right here, there's almost 300 shot in this thing alone, and in a 10 inch circle, which is roughly you know where you want to be when you're turkey hunting, there was almost 130 to 150 BBs in a 10 inch circle. That's impressive. So like I'm not even going to sugarcoat why the TSS is, you know, the the most I'm going to let the video do the talking for sure. us, but I know for here at the real shot, um we carry this, but it's in limited supply. Right. And um and it uh, Mark wanted me to just let people know that we do have it in stock, but it's going to go fast here when people really start thinking turkey season. This stuff is, is going to go really fast. And I got a couple other boxes here. We got it in 20. We got it in 12. So we have some TSS in stock and in ready to roll for anybody that's looking at it. And then the other thing we're, we have a little challenge here is how long is it going to take for the bullets tip right over? <laughs> you know. But then, And then we have a couple of these, uh, these Mossberg 500 shotguns. So this is an f- awesome gun. Now, this is not a youth model. But it, it's definitely usable for the youth as well. I mean, it comes in two different Mossy Oak camouflages. But this is the Mossberg 500, and this is the 410 edition. So if anybody's looking to get a kid into it and, um, you know, and looking for that light recoil or just overall some experienced turkey hunters are looking to change their game up a little bit right. and ex- get a different challenge, this is something they might want to come in and check out and consider. Right. So, And the nice thing, too, about those 410s is, I mean, they are lightweight oh versus, yeah. you know, a 12-gauge or a 20-gauge. Yep. I mean, they are very light. So, I mean, if you're older or younger, you know, and you don't want that st- added stress of carrying around a heavy shotgun, right. that's kind of the way to go. I mean... I think what's really nice is all these ammunitions that we are uh, pumping out for all these different types of uh, firearms, they're getting so efficient in every caliber and every yep. size that it's no longer do you have to have that big, giant you know, rifle or shotgun for your game. Yep. Now you can sink uh, or bring it down in size, shrink it down um, to something that's a little bit more efficient, a little bit more lightweight, a little bit more easier to use. So. Yep, and like you said, with the ammos are doing that for us, so... And then, like, what I noticed here is I was hunting a pheasant, a benefit pheasant hunt the other week, and, it, and I kind of got laughed at, but I was using a 20-gauge, a youth model 20-gauge. Right. But that gun was so easy to maneuver, especially yep. when you're hunting over somebody else's dog and everything like that. And, I mean, I, I did just fine. I hit all the pheasants, and it's just it's matching. It's almost like matching a hatch in fishing world. Do the same thing with your guns. It's like, you know, you're not going to buy an arrow for your bow and for the most part and not shoot it. Right. Well, different chokes equal different ammunitions and all that kind of stuff. And yep. they're so they're so efficient, like you said, that you know, just now's the time. Like turkey season for most part starts in three weeks for every the uh, you know, the first season guys. Right. If you haven't done it yet, get out, get here, pattern you know, get your ammunition bought, get your chokes bought, pattern them with shotguns, find out because when we had Nick Brantner on here, I was surprised that not all ammos are gonna do the same thing. Right. You know, not all size of the shot is going to do the same thing. That one yep. was really inf- informative for me, who's just, I've been a bull hunter my whole entire life. I've, I've turkey hunted, but, I mean, I'm not I'm not going to lie. I haven't really took the time. I've patterned my guns, but I've right. never, I haven't bought plenty of ammunition to do it. So yep. that's one thing that we're going to work on as well. And so, like, with some of these YouTube videos, some of them are really, really done well, and some of them are just kind of, you know, they're whatever. But 
to me, it opens our eyes as as a company who are, we're going to do these type of reviews and we're going to do this kind of stuff. Right. I open it up. The format is what are some of these products that people want to see hear us at the real shot testing? Right. You know, and what is some of that? How, how can we make these? What's different? We already know that your creative mind here is going to help us take these all these videos in a different avenue that everybody else is doing. But, you know, feel free to send a message to the store, you know, info at the real shot, the real shot dot com on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. Send us some information on what you want to see and and do. But um, so let's just we can go right into that first video. A lot of these videos aren't very long. I mean, some of them, I think they're chopped up, you know, but most of them are not really long. But the first product video we want to get into is the TSS Turkey Load. And I believe that's done by Scout Look. So we're going to let those guys kind of explain the the, be- the benefits. They're right at Federal. They're going to talk about that. And then we'll come back here. We'll chat a little bit about it. And then we'll get right into the uh, Mossberg 500 turkey hunt with the TSS ammunition. Perfect. And we'll just roll, 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 roll from there. So roll that beautiful bean footage. So yeah, that was that was the first video of the some of these product ones. But that I just there's so much information in that video that right away that I I can't even begin to answer. <laughs> right. And it, you know, and it's just go ahead and watch these videos. The the other thing I did too is when I was scouring YouTube for some other interesting videos is I found there's a number of really good ones about patterning your turkey shotgun. Right. And um, the TSS by far is probably you know one of the most popular, if not one of the best ones, but we also carry a wide variety of turkey ammunition here, and the one that I'm a big fan of is the Winchester Longbeard XR. Right. And that one, for a uh, price point, um, which is not the most cheap, it's not the cheapest, but it's not the most expensive one. Right. That one gets really high, rev- high, high, high reviews, and right. that's the that's the shotgun ammunition that I use for turkey season, and I'll still continue to use it just because. It's an affordable price for the, for the amount of shells that you get, and it does right. a great job. So Yeah, the same thing I always tell people with uh, ammunition is the same as buying wine. You never buy the cheapest wine, buy the second cheapest. So because, buy the second know, that's yep. that's going to be your that's good a great, one. That's a great way to look at it. Right. Uh, but, no, one thing that I really enjoyed about that was, you know, with the amount of uh, – pellets that you get in there and with the distance and the velocity that you're able to get that 410 ammunition to get to yep i mean that's that's an efficient round right you know i mean that's that's not the 410 that we knew 10 years ago no you know i mean i i know there's a lot of like you can get 410 handguns and things like that and you know where you could hit something in 10 yards away maybe right and now i mean if you're able to reach out there you know i don't know what the what the distance rating for accuracy is on there but i'm thinking if you're getting 20 30 40 yards out of that yeah i mean that's that's a, almost well, a the, game changer. It is, and the, the thing about it as well is like, now not not all conditions are going to be the same, and we're not advocating just buy this four ten and you'll be able to go out and shoot a turkey at forty yards. You know, you got to do the work on the, on the back front of it, or on the on the you know do your work, your homework, and everything to know that. But in that situation, if the stars align and everything is right, you might be able to hammer down a gobbler at forty yards with this thing. But you know. You're, it's just like shooting your vertical bow or knowing your own rifle or whatever like that. Just know your effective range right? and stay within it. I mean, if I'm buying this 410, I know that that's probably – I don't – just like the 20 gauge, that youth ga- 20 gauge I was talking about, I'm probably not trying to get further than, um, you know, 30 yards. I'm going to do everything I can, put decoys closer, get myself in a good spot to get the turkey as close as I can. And I do that with the 12 gauge no matter what. But if I, you know, you know, in a pinch that if you have to throw a shell out there, this thing could definitely do it at 40 yards. And in this next video here where these guys are are hunting, I believe now this is into the video for a while. This is another scout look video, but they're hunting now in Kansas. 
and they're using the Mossberg 500. It's not the camo edition like we have here, but they um, they have two birds come in, and they they talk about it back and forth. If I if I included that portion, but basically if I didn't, they talk about how this this one tom they shoot the first one with the 410, drop it in its tracks. But right. the next one, they talk about how that bird was fluctuating within effective range. Sure. So it got to the point where they didn't want to quite pull the trigger with the 410, but so they had an extra shotgun with them. They had a 20 gauge with them, and, you know, and, th and that's one thing they'd talk about because the other thing, too, is that pattern gets bigger at further distances. There was two other toms in the background, and he mentions, he goes, if I pull the trigger, I'm shooting all three. Right. So I needed a tighter pattern at that little bit further distance. So he went with a, I believe it was a 20 gauge of some kind and yeah. with the TSS ammunition and they hammered down two birds. So right. again, now this is fast forward there. They've hunted different states. Now they're in Kansas. They got two long beards coming in and let the video speak for itself. They're coming, they're coming through the timber right there. Bailey, you see him? Yep, yep. Yes! I can't Dude, believe it! That was freaking Dude. awesome. I thought we were gonna be here all morning. That was a circus. <laughs> when he gave me the 410 and he was he was in range, but to take him and all I could see through those beats was three heads all lined up. It was, was total like, chaos. That's awesome. That, I was like, yeah, I, I love first of all the production no quality on this is fantastic. Really good. I thought that they like, were just using random footage of turkey and then all of a sudden boom. Range. That slow mo oh footage of that bird <laughs> goblin. That second yeah. shotgun in here. And he said Switch, switch. Take that, that's a good call, though, <laughs> to have. Because then I got out there and I figured, because you had the stick two out there yep. about 30. Yep. And he was about 10 yards past that, and I wasn't going to shoot with 410 at 40. Look at that, BB. That. That's, I'm glad I mean, you, that's. You told me, you said, bring both of them in case, in case one of the days too far I kinda, out. That was awesome. <laughs> I'm going to talk, talk about after the video is over with her. Right? For the most part, you can cut her down. But If I was a betting man, I'd put my money on that. They had, It was the same birds. You could stop it. Yeah. So now... That that video footage of the BBs is super cool, but that shows you how open that pattern was. Yep. Even though that's uh, that's a tight cho turkey choke with some uh, some TSS ammunition, that bird was probably on the fringe of being a little too far for that. Right. So that video was really good in a way, but then at the end there, now they harvested the turkey, but the thing that you know that they really don't talk about is. You're gonna be picking BBs out of that turkey, right? Yeah, there's, you know, that that's one thing I I noticed too. You know, that's a that's a wide pattern, so I'm guessing it was probably you know a few yards out of yep. out of range. But at the same time, you know, they put it put it down and they got know. it down and it, you know, and they go back to themselves in the blind and all that kind of stuff. So, but that the production quality, like you said, the slow mo footage of that was really cool, right? But yeah, I mean, so they, they, in the book we talked about, they talk about that bird was on the edge of distance for the 410 so they moved up to the 20 gauge right and then when that slow mo footage there it probably shows you that bird was on the on the cusp being just a little too far for the 20 gauge effective maybe maybe not they got the bird you know doubled up that was a really cool and all that kind of stuff but that just goes to show you that you know know your weapon know what's beyond it and then yep. just you know make sure you take the time to be educated on how it shoots and all that kind of stuff but those two videos are really neat because out of the out of the all the YouTube videos out there about the TSS and there wasn't very many good ones about the the Mossberg four or the Mossberg five hundred and the four ten edition, but right. those those are two really really good ones. So you know that means though we get to make one. I know that's so. I just want to spin this real quick before we get off of the turkey talk. Yep. Um, we're kind of in the works of planning an entire mini series dedicated to turkey hunting, especially now that we've got all the equipment that you need. We've yep. got all the firearms in the store, and I think that's where we're going to start. We're going to start from where, how to pick the right gun for your hunt. Yep. And then once we pick our gun, how to set it up, how to get it patterned, how to operate it, you know, safely, and then take you all the way to the field where we hopefully will harvest a turkey with said gun and right. go all the way from from start to finish to show you guys. 
how to be successful, but also how to be educated. So that's Correct. gonna be super cool. And, and not only just the the gun and the ammunition aspect of it all, but your calls. And right. All. Now, by no means are am I a professional turkey hunter, or you know, I'm, I'm never gonna claim to be one. But I I have success. Now, like I had really good success last year. I shot my two biggest toms. But now I usually go in a drought status, so I'll probably be a drought this year. This year we want to try to do this awesome video footage stuff. And right. But the cool thing is there's a number of other people here that turkey hunt right. that, you know, we can hopefully get with them and do all the filming with it. So, yep. no, that's that's kind of, the, like I said in the very beginning, that's my point of these videos is some are really good quality production. Some are, you know, there's a lot of GoPro footage, which... You're going to see GoPro footage from the real shot. Oh, yeah, a lot more here shortly. Yep, and it, it, the way about it is if we want to go out and capture as much stuff as we possibly can, you're, you're going to be gone on some doing some things. Brian's going to be gone doing something. We can't – we're going to try to film with big cameras and all that kind of stuff, but it's just so much easier to, with these GoPros, the, the Hero 7s yeah. that we're using. Those are fantastic. The and audio, the, cool the video footage on those things is amazing. Right, and the cool thing we're going to do to prove ourselves with the uh, community is just the cool fact that everything that you're going to see from us, for the most part, is going to be something that you can actually go out and do. Yep. It's very organic. You know, we don't want to pretend that we're some big, high-budget, high you know, big production setup or anything like that and make – theatrical videos <laughs> although i'd like to well uh, i mean trs live be, is an example of that yeah. i mean we have our hiccups just like anybody else right. possibly can so and you know it's going to be it's going to be really cool and i think just that organic you know you get to see the stuff that's not going to be overproduced we're not just going to go hunt a game farm and say that we just did this ourselves right. we're going to go and show you and if we don't have success we're going to tell you why right. we're not going to hide it you know, and that's all part of the hunting and fishing industry is that you're not always successful. Right. I spent the last four fishing trips without <laughs> catching a fish, and then <laughs> yesterday I caught my little 11 inch walleye, and I was happy that I broke yeah, the spell. Yeah. There but, it uh, is. First fish of 2019. First fish of 2019. Besides nice. that, I, I don't count the first sheephead of 2019 oh, as the okay. first fish. That was. Well, I mean, I didn't say that. Sheephead is a fish, <laughs> Zach. I mean, you gotta you gotta count something. But game fish, the yeah. oh, game fish. Game fish is the old Walter, 11 incher. Yeah, just about 11, maybe 12. Uh, Real skinny little guy. Specifics about where he caught it, how he caught it, anything like that. Um, I will say uh, modified river rig. Um, dragging it across the bottom in some real heavy current, dropped it down into a really nice deep hole. Thanks to uh, one of our guys here showing me how to do that. And while we were in the middle of talking because we weren't catching fish, I thought that I snagged down a rock and just started to reel it in. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, that's fighting me. Yeah, right. So there you go. It was real, real simple. The dead weight um, of a uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, it didn't didn't put up a fight at all. And then, um, good. Ah, uh, yeah, that was about it. The guy next to us got two, but the spot that we were at, you know, just south of here, I won't give any specifics. Two, two keepers, or did you just caught two? He got he got two keepers. He brought nice. them home. He said that was dinner, and uh, I I put mine back. You know, it was yep. too small and. Yeah, I, there was a long night. We hit up a couple other spots and didn't didn't find any bro, fish. Bro. It's, it's just so cold. It's so cold, and the water is just so weird right now because we were we had high water at one end where we literally drove 0.4 miles on the same stretch of river, got to the third spot of the night, last spot of the night, and the water was down almost two feet, and it was up two feet on the other end. Isn't that crazy? It's insane. Um, so, yeah, that was a weird trip. But anyways, anyways. next up, <laughs> next we've got up. this awesome fishing video, okay? The, you want to explain it? I, I didn't really watch it, but I just <laughs> want to talk about what it's about because I am impressed by this reel that we're yeah. going to be showing. So what we're showing is the uh, Shimano Corrado DC-150. Yep. Um, and that deal is a really, really sick reel. I mean, it's got a, it's got it's one of those computerized reels, so it actually kind of helps track your line for you. And then when it hits the water and the tension comes off, so, yep. it so stops it. it. So it's what preventing backlash, basically, prevent, you know. So a lot of the problems of why a lot of people don't use baitcasters is because you constantly have to be on them. What I mean by that is you have to thumb them. Yep. Because once you hit the 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 um the button here, it puts it in free spool mode. Right. And now, so there's a lot of adjustments you do on baitcasters to make sure you're it's f going at the right distance. Right. Uh, I'm mean, moving at the right point, so you're not backlashing every single time. But there's a computer chip built into this thing. And again, I'm not going to try to talk to people like I'm the big bass fisherman. If Brian was here, he'd explain it all, or Justin or Ty, one of these guys, and right. come on in here and talk to them because they'll tell you the ABC is all about it. But right. all I know is this thing is it has a computer in it. And does. this video, why I chose this one, because, the, again, this guy goes over and he he breaks down, you know, it weighs this much. And it's got the, you know, these gearing in it and all that kind of stuff where Miles, you know, if you want to know more about the Crotto DC, 
Go find our TRS Live with Miles Warwick from, you know, Shimano on it. Let that dude explain everything about it. Right. But um, so what this guy does is the funny part about it is he casts it and he goes, I'm going to take my thumb right off it. And that's the point of this reel is anybody, it's going to be a great reel for anybody because he literally doesn't thumb it at all. And he's throwing a frog. Right. And not only is he chucking a frog, it looks like pretty far. But as soon as that frog hits the water, he pulls his thumb right off of it. And that reel stops. Yep. And so he doesn't get a backlash. And, he, you know, and he's even like, this is, so according to the video, again, this is all video. This is this guy's first time using this reel. Sure. So he's like, holy man, I can throw it far. And look at that. He's like, there's no, nothing. I don't. Yep. So he, I think we, the little bit of segment I have available here, there's two casts he makes. When you can literally see his thumb. Plus, the nice thing is he's using a high vis line, yep. Like Justin and Jess were talking about, so that you can literally see that there's no backlash. Now, towards the end of this video, why I included the end part is this also goes back to the conversation with Justin and Jess. Is this guy explains he says, "What in the heck? I'm gonna only do it out on this water, and here comes this little boat drives right through the area he's casting, right? And it just kind of goes back all into the uh, the etiquette of, you know." You can't tell me there's more, there's more, or there's not any other fish in any other areas. So, this one here is about the Crado DC. I'm not, I'm not quite sure who the guy is. I mean, we can, we can credit him, or you can see the credit on his, on his YouTube video and all that kind of stuff. But he's using the Crado DC, and he's going to explain briefly a little bit about it, and then he's going to show you a couple casts. Here we go. Couple tests here and see what happens. All right. Well, let's just give this thing a whirl. We got it on setting number one, which is the long distance cast. Let's see what happens. I'm not even gonna thumb the thing at all. Ain't that huh. nuts? You can hear wow. that computer wow. working. Yeah. That's pretty far. I did not give it all my speed, all my power. No backlash, no nothing. I could definitely throw harder and farther. And like I said, I got 50 pound braid. I've got just a standard frog on here just to give you an idea of what I'm casting. And that is on a seven and a half foot flipping stick. Let's give her another wing. I love that noise. Yeah, it's awesome. Nothing. Nothing. Look at that. Nothing, dude. <laughs> this is exactly what happens when you are really trying to do something important. <laughs> We're like the only boat for miles out here. All of a sudden, the boat wings on in, and we cannot even do this. <laughs> that is where I'm casting. That is where they're going to anchor up and probably chuck out a couple of bobbers. <laughs> Can't blame them. It's a nice day. I get it. Uh, anyway, we'll just go with it. Hey, maybe we'll learn, learn something, see what they're catching. Okay, that's so anyway. Right. That's right. <laughs> but I just love it. You know, it's typically probably the way it goes. I mean, oh, every time. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> He's just It's like every time we try to pick a shore fishing spot and go, nobody's going to nobody's be there. Nobody's here. If we say that, we show up and there's like three or four cars <laughs> yeah. there and everyone's oh man, not catching anything with a bucket full of fish. I feel <laughs> like this was a uh, Bassmaster Classic conversation at some point when we were down there. Meaning like um, it's just human nature to be close to one another. Right. I don't know why that is, but like. The biggest one for me is a pet peeve is go to a movie theater. Yep. Sit in a spot where you don't think anybody else wants to sit, and I guarantee you somebody's going to pull up in sit front right of you, you and then behind you, and it's going to be the person that probably freaking has the biggest bag of popcorn or bucket <laughs> of popcorn and is going to just shovel it in their mouth and just smack the whole time. He, Either that but, or the people that talk. Oh, oh, the people that are always like, hey, this part's pretty cool. And you're just like, sure it is. Yeah. I have to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's nothing that makes me mad. It's like urinal etiquette, dude. That is the one that always gets or me. Or parking in a parking lot. Parking in a parking lot. Park in the absolute back. <laughs> you walk out, there's a car on both sides of you. Go to the bathroom, you take the furthest urinal, guy but, comes out next to you and makes you feel bad. You know, so <laughs> anybody that fishes... Or understands that, knows what that guy was going to. You know, and I, I mean, as <laughs> you and I can probably attest to this, some, maybe some other people, but there's nothing more awkward than when you're trying to film something and people walk in. I, I just instantly just, like, just clam right up. 
Right. There's times where, like, the, so the biggest struggle that I'm having here at The Real Shot with this new marketing media type role is I want to do a vlog so bad. Right. I just, every time I, Zach's like, just shut up and do one then. <laughs> but literally, you know, so I'll grab either the camera or the GoPro and I'm talking into it. But then if I go up front and there's somebody that's within earshot of me, I just clam right up. Yep. You know, and some people are probably appreciative, like, this dude's finally stopped talking. But <laughs> I just, it's, it, you know, so for me, that's one of the struggles. Or if you're out fishing, you you just got to reach a point where you just can't give a crap. But this guy was probably trying to put together a video for his page. Right. And here comes a boat. And I wonder how the rest of that video turned out from, you know, editing. Thankfully, he could make it look the way we want right. to see it. But Yeah, that's the, the wonderful thing about media is it'll never be perfect because there's all those oh, outside deals. Right. And, you know, I mean, that's the other thing, too, is, like, think about the Bassmaster and all the people that were, you know, in the pit when we're like, hey, look at that. We're the only people back here that have media passes. We need to get this footage, and people wouldn't move out of the way because they're, oh, I was sure They didn't care. Because they they were trying to get awesome, you know, social media pictures and all that kind of stuff. So, but, yeah, it's, I just thought that. That video was really <laughs> good because it demonstrated the Crotto DC and the capabilities of it. You know, the further into the specs, you can either rewatch the video or you can go right. to Shimano's website and learn all that kind of stuff. But the portion where he just pulls the thumb right from it, yeah, that thing hits the water and stops. Well, it's it's outstanding. What I thought was cool too is if you go back and watch the footage. At one point, the first cast he makes, you know, he takes his thumb off, and for a second there, right when the bait comes down to fall, you start to see that slack like it's about to backlash. Yep. But then it just catches it right away Stop. and spools it right Stops in. Stops right here. So it's, that's super sick. <coughs> so this next one, world's strongest fishing rod, <laughs> testing the limits. So I was here. So what the the background about this one is? This is the Guggen Squad rod. So for those who aren't familiar, you know, the Guggen Squad, and you can maybe fill me in. I'm not 100% up. Uh, these guys, they make plastics, correct? Yep, they've got the Guggen baits now. And I think what this is my favorite this because they're all, they're all basically, I think, in affiliation with favorite rods. Yes. So they came out with this combo mostly for the flash factor. You know, that's yep. That's a definitely a crazy cool looking rod. Yeah, and it's and it's a combination that's you know it's super durable, which is video is going to express. Right. And it's rather you know it's rather inexpensive. We have a good selection of them. I I couldn't quite remember. I can look in inventory and see what the different actions. Now is that a two piece rod? This is a two piece. rod. That's a two piece rod. This is a two piece, and it's so the why the why I chose this video is first of all nobody knows their own product better than Guggen Squad. Yep. And you know for for a sixty dollar combination, these guys put this rod through the test now right you know so what are you going to sacrifice by having the different components that allow this rod to do that you might sacrifice some feel yeah some the weight. sensitivity's got to be pretty down. you know all that kind of stuff but first of all kids are going to love this right because they know they've watched Guggen videos they've watched favorite videos and yep. they know well now it's awesome because they can get these combinations at the real shot right and they can be out there, you know. Heck, maybe this, maybe the next YouTuber is going to be purchase their rod from the real shot. So, again, fast forward through this one. This is a vlog style video. I believe the backdrop behind this is I think these guys went to Walmart. I wish they were in Wisconsin. They should have came to the real shot. Right. But they bought this rod, and then they picked up two dumbbells or a uh, free weights. They picked up a two and a half pounder and a ten pounder. And then they they talk about it, but at the end of the video, they end up switching the monofilament to some braid, and they do some pretty crazy stuff with this rod. I mean, I'm yeah. surprised this thing hasn't shattered. So this is the Guggen combination here at the real shot. Wait. I'm going to go ahead and shut this so I can tie it. I apologize. I've tried tie to pay attention to these videos and make sure nobody on. swears, it's but if they do, it's not intentional. <laughs> I don't believe it I'm happens. Cast it happens. Down. It's just got so much flex in it. Two and a half pound weight. Well, someone's driving up. <laughs> See? Uh, Dude, he's filming. Okay. No big deal. <laughs> and the I mean, my bumper's kind of he's fine. Just right, clams so right up. I'll tighten the drag down real quick so it doesn't pop off and smack me in the face. All right. <laughs> Does that look ridiculous or what? A little bit. Look at that. Just dang Two and a half pound so weight. That's an extreme dangle. Do you think this? Do you think this line could do ten pounds? I think I can cast it. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. Will it reel it in? I wrap my tip. I yeah, wrap the tip. <laughs> okay. Want to do ten pounds? Ten pounds. <laughs> All right. Ten pounds. 
go ahead and skip the whole. Uh, I just gotta say, after go fishing yesterday and with a one right, and a so half ounce, I actually ounce, did buy 65 uh, pound under, braid. I, I'm thinking like I couldn't even imagine this because my rod was even like right. struggling so to huck that out there, <laughs> right? I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna lift it up. Do you think it'll lift it up? <laughs> I do not recommend doing this at home. Look at him. Look at his face. He's like ready for that rod to snap. Oh, I did. <laughs> Jeez. All right, this is high sticking as I can get it. Uh, oh my. <laughs> the rod held up though. No, the rod's fine. The line broke. Like, <laughs> Not the I'm rod. Like, I'm like almost like oh, man. <laughs> fearful. I'm like, don't explode in my face. Because I've never really actually put a, a rod to a limit like that. Do you think I should switch over to the braid? Just because I, I think the rod will hold, like for sure, lifting it straight off off the ground like that. I just some, have to respool. Yeah, I've got. I actually bought line because I want. I think we could try to pull the truck. That's my real goal. <laughs> That's <laughs> the end <laughs> result. The is the pull is. Do it. You want to respool? What is that? A two fifty? I think. Here we go. I'm gonna run back. Something like that. <laughs> They're trying to oh, spool the reel right, right now, right there. Here you go. and he realizes that he's going to be running a while. <laughs> <laughs> this is all we got to do, Zach. <laughs> Look at him front yeah. and back. Is there still a line on there? Yes. Oh, that's why. <laughs> 260 yards on here. I just thought about something. This could be like 300 this yards of like line. He's really, just going to really, run really, back really, and forth really, until it spools. Really good catfishing run. <laughs> That's Probably exactly when you were just talking like about that, and I felt like with the backbone of that, and he said a nice catfishing rod. Like, that is not a lie. I would love to try that for catfishing, because <laughs> I'm looking to put together a couple combos for that. Right. And I think that might be the one. <laughs> I mean, I, I, <laughs> there's a 10-pound weight with braid now. Look at this thing. <laughs> Look at that thing. He picks it up off the ground. Uh, It's crazy. That is insane. It's crazy. Right. So I decided, you know what? Lifting off the ground is cool, but let's actually see how far we can get the rod to like seriously dangle. That truck dangle. looks sweet. Like do a serious dangle. Dude, I can't wait to see what Brian's wrap looks like. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> look at that. That is nuts. That's nuts. I got boat flip 10 pounds all day. <laughs> boat flip. It's crazy. <laughs> I, the big thing is this drag's holding up. That's the crazy part. Right. I mean, that's t pretty testimonial for the reel itself. Uh, the guy who owns Favor's like, dude, I promise you it's the strongest rod out there. It could literally do anything. I was like, I mean, I've used it, but I've never freaking done this kind of so dumb I, stuff with it. Is, what, is this yeah. a Guggen squad What's or next? is this what a should favorite we do? I got a bunch of stuff in the back of my truck. Do you think we can cast, this is, this think is can cast at yeah, 10 pounds? Probably not. I tell you right now, that's a, that's a Dodge rolling up right now. 100%. There's a lot of workers still working on the house in the back. This is 100% of Dodge. Want to bet a million dollars? I mean, I've seen it. Oh, you did? <laughs> <laughs> that truck's mean. Do you think I should try casting it? What do you think the, what do you think the chance is? You can still so, try it. I don't know. I, I, don't I, don't know. I don't think it's going to cast. I think you like, fast forward a little like, bit here. I thought I, I had like another yeah. okay. time stamp under. Where step number three of seeing how it's it's not just yeah, seeing how strong the rod is. It's also seeing what the what the reel's capable of. Right now, I'd, I'm fairly shocked. Now I want to see if we can yeah, pull that's that out. That, that is shocking for that price. Out the this is like the combination right I'm gonna buy my dad because he's right there. a push button we can fisherman. Get like, I don't but he goes through rods like this thing weighs. What's my idea? Just tie it tie it off to the bumper and just pull the drag down and just see if I can get the oh here's where he's oh wow oh he's still pulling weight. We'll be close. I'm in neutral. All right, so we know it's flat. It's actually kind of a slight damn. You know what? Old faithful knot. <laughs> Always works. Trucks in neutral, flat ground, knots good. Alright. Here we go. Dude. Move it. It's starting to move. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it. No freaking way. <laughs> Just in case you ever need to pull your uh, truck out of the road, right. this is the rod right. to use it with. And then they stop. I don't you. think I can move it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it goes uphill a lot. All I guess right. You can, you, oh, I'll man. Take it. I, that's one I could watch out the rest of the day. That's a. I think that's like a 30 minute video after all the hoodlums they pull off, but that's still impressive for a $60 rod and reel combination, which we have here at the reel shop. But that rod held up to it. And even like he keeps talking about a couple times is the gearing in that reel handles yeah, some of that I'd abuse. Just, like I said, I'm 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 I think I'm sold on that. You know, <laughs> we were talking uh Nick, you know, and I were talking about 
how to rig up a couple, you know, uh, catfish poles and use talking, you know, if you really want to cheap out, you know, get an ugly stick. They used to be flimsy, but now they've got backbone. And now I'm looking at this going like, that's probably yeah. the one. Yep. That's probably the one. Yeah, that would. <laughs> and that reel looks like that reel is big enough to handle some, you know, some line, bigger line capacities and all that kind of stuff. Right. So that's, that one's just kind of a fun one. And then did I, I sent, I think I sent you the last one about the react sites here. Did I? I, nope. I do not have that one. Oh, okay. Um, so we'll skip that one. But anyways, I I had thought I had shared one with the React technology. That's a pretty cool one. We'll post that one to the page later on. So perfect. We can get right into some of these now. Are just going to go right into some unique, some interesting, and they're all kind of outdoor related in some fashion. That doesn't mean they're hunting and fishing for all of them. So these are just going to be quick clips of some stuff as I was blowing through. And, and again, if anybody's watching and they have another video that we feel like we should have on there. You know, post it on there. But anyway, so let's roll the first one. It's a bear attack. <laughs> <laughs> this first video is a bear attack. It's a bear attack. Let's just get into it. Caleb sitting here trying to get lucky. On the ground. Double up. Pulled up to the bait site. And the guy, Brett, he's seen something on there. Are they are they bow hunting? Yeah, they're bow oh, hunting. God. They're bow hunting. Listen, I almost think that's real auto yo of his heart. So yeah, that, okay, you're good there. Yep. So, <laughs> that's all I gotta say about that one. Yeah, that's that's wild. That's a grizzly bear, man. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's nuts. I mean, that's that's super nuts, right? So a lot of these videos all came from the same. Uh, what is it? What is same. It? it was like the same video. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, what they call them? Compilation. Compilation. Yeah. 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 So let's, throw, let's just keep rolling. One this one's another. the intro to it. This one's pretty neat. That's this pretty neat. Going. That's pretty neat. How neat is that? Yeah. <laughs> what? Hey! 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 Oh, man. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps. God. Oh, man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you can stop that one. Oh man! Oh my God! See that would just first of all, people <laughs> on the water. Like I've noticed some things when I've been out in boats where like people don't really pay attention. They just think, "Oh, I got this whole open water and I can do whatever I want," and it's not the truth. Oh, because there are a lot man. of small fishing boats out there. And if that was, oh man, that's that one. Like that one actually gives me chills a little bit just watching that happen. Can you imagine what was going through those their brains? Oh, you heard I, it. I yeah, I would just be like, uh, that'd be my first thing. Would just be jumping. I'm out. Yeah, I'm going out and down. <laughs> and you notice like it's till the last second when they're they're getting out of that boat. I don't know why they waited. You know, they're not. They obviously aren't. They had, they're going too fast. It's so loud. <clears throat> so a funny story about that. I was on the chain of lakes in Wapaka this last summer, and I have uh the little round boat. It's called the Ultra Skiff. The Ultra Skiff 360. A troll motor operated. Anyways, I'm fishing and I'm going through a channel. Right. And it's kind of more towards the evening. It's plenty of light out, but, like, where I think uh, wake is starting to end, where they can actually produce wake. Right. Um, I'm So I'm, like, literally probably 60 yards off of shore. So I'm not even anywhere where a bigger boat should be going. And here comes a pontoon run around the corner. Nobody else is around me, so you can clearly see me. And they, it was the same thing. Not they weren't going very fast because they're not, first of all, pontoons don't go that far. Well, not, you know, this not one didn't. Them, right. But they're literally driving right at me, and I'm kind of doing the same thing. So, like, it wasn't as close as this. They weren't going fast enough, but I had to get out of their way. Right. And I'm like, are you kidding me? There's nobody, like, the left-hand portion of the water was right. wide open. Yep. Move over. Yep. Move yep. over. And it's, so, no, some of these videos are going to have a, a theme to them where just freaking be courteous of the next person. Pay attention. 
But it, it was... You shouldn't be operating a vehicle if you're not paying attention. <sighs> so Anyways, now this one is a hang gliding video, so this is really... So there's some... There, here's, I'll, I'll give some backstory while it's rolling, because I know this video. You know this and, one? Yeah, and so I definitely... I, there'd be some lawsuits in the future in this one, that's for sure. Well, so. to me, it sounds like the dude in the flannel is the one taking them. Because if you listen real close, he goes, Are you ready to have fun? Three, two, one, go. Run, 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 run. Right there, I would poop. Yep. <laughs> so what happened is, is I do believe that the one in the blue shirt guy, he's the guide. And they never, um, they never, because he's got to be the one to steer and everything. Uh, and he's supposed to be tied in behind him. And he's not. They never, they never fastened any of the safety equipment or anything. I mean, so right there on that ledge, they're probably, what do you think, 150, 200 feet above the ground? Yeah, that's that's a good call. I'd probably put it at 150 feet. But then now they go over this ledge to land, and now they're 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 over a thousand feet off the ground once they get over this ledge. Yeah. Look at this guy. How do you? <sighs> that's talk all. about holding on for your life. That's the crazy thing about adrenaline in the human body, though, is you might be the weakest person in the world, but when your body goes into that mode, it's your your strength goes through the roof. <laughs> the guy that the guy that's flying this thing is literally has no control over that. He there's no right. way he can help that guy because he can't get enough. He can't turn it because there's all his weight is on that side. Now, if they were smart, he would just put his hand on the the bar. And then try to crank that to the left and get it to be able to just get into a tight left turn. I mean, they're they're above the ground a couple thousand feet here now. Yeah, you're you're at a good thousand feet right there. But that once once you get over this bluff, I mean, dude, that would be so frightening. That'd be so frightening. I don't think I would have been able to hang on like that. I would have been able to do it. I'd have been looking at trees like, which one of these is gonna hold me the most when I fall? <laughs> and I think as the as the I don't want to give it away, but I mean, this was, this is intense. And the thing about hang gliders too is you can't get a, the nose down too much because if you push it past that point, you know you're the, the air is moving too fast to even let you maneuver back up. Now he's got one hand on the bar and one hand is on the dude's pant leg. That's it. That has gotta hurt too. Oh. Because with all that weight they can't you can't flare it so you can't slow yourself down. Be like, yep, bye. <laughs> oh. You know, think about it, at that speed, even at that look at little that. that look at how fast they were going. I mean you're you're talking like 60, 70 knots. Yeah. That he just fell off of that thing. You can yeah. I mean this this whole compilation of videos was pretty impressive, but yeah, I don't know about that one, man. I all right, so now this one, whew, this one would uh, spook me a little bit. You know, being from Wisconsin, you go out in the waters, there's nothing you really got to worry about out here. I mean, the scariest thing you got to deal with is, I mean, snapping turtles, and you don't even really have to worry about those. Right. But these guys, I think, the, what, Australia? Something like that. I think it, this is Australia. They do, ha they do have an accent. I think but this is in Australia, because, you know, everything <clears throat> in Australia wants to kill you. Yep. Everything. So, uh... This one I shared to the TRS Outdoors the other day. Daniel on a donkey. On a donkey. And, I mean, he got a big Just fish. keep pressure, keep pressure. Yeah. I think it's like a snake fish if you look it's at right. it. It's all right. Look at that thing. He needs one of those favorite rods. Yeah, right? He would have <laughs> pulled the F-250 right up. I mean, right this, up, is, like, this is what it felt like when I got Daniel. that buffalo carp. Oh, okay. I mean, it was it's bad. Oh, yep. You just got to get it. Oh, come on. Keep the pressure on. Keep it on, Daniel. Yep. Come on. When you get it up, you just gotta run. Yes. Yes, Daniel. Ripping it through the weeds. Quick. Quick, bro. The big fucker's on it. Oh. <laughs> Boop. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daniel. Daniel. Stop swearing, Daniel. Run, bro. Run back, bro. Run back, bro. You see that wake come you in there back, on the right bro. side. Oh, my God. Run back. Oh, run, bro. Run, 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 run. Run, Daniel. Run. Run. Run, Daniel. That's a big run. crocodile. Run, bro. Oh, no, he's got it. Pressure on. Keep the pressure. 
Oh, no, you can pressure <laughs> the rod, it's so Daniel. Big. It's so big, he's swallowing it. Oh, the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing's gone down his gob. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, Run, Daniel. Run, Daniel. Oh, my God. Oh. That's a huge crack. Daniel, that was a boost of a fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, if you didn't have that on video, I don't think anyone would believe it. Nobody would believe happened. it. Nobody would believe Nobody it. Nobody would do it. As it says right here, if it wasn't on film, no one would believe right. it. Right. <laughs> I mean, like, oh, man. That's just, oh. Run Daniel. And again, like, we could have just had these whole entire videos play. Right. But I wanted to pick out ones that are kind of interesting. and <laughs> Better, all that more relevant, more yeah. More relevant. So, like, the next one here, so the, the screen that's open is, I think this dude catches, like, a muskrat or a beaver or something like that, but it rolls quickly into this bird. This bird is fishing. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these videos are not from... I don't... What is that thing? It looks like a mus muskrat or something. It's huge. You can hear it. as a poor, poor guy. Yeah, so that's the video. So this bird, super smart bird. <laughs> Look at that he thing. knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need that bird for me. Right? <laughs> Look at it. Bam. Got one. Got a fish. That's that's it impressive. Literally, that fish was used. That bird was using bait to catch that fish. They're becoming self-aware. Oh man, that's nice. So that's that one was just. I just was like, what? That's insane. Somebody was feeding that bird. Like you know, think about all the sparrows that follow you around at McDonald's. Right. Now, if those sparrows took those French fries that you're throwing and they went sparrows and or seagulls. Well, there, I've seen a lot of sparrows. Really? You've never been on a playground and a sparrow comes around and you throw it a French fry at McDonald's or a fast food joint? I've never done that. Oh my god! Just done it to gulls. Oh, that's nuts! But that bird literally baited that fish. It in. knows. It knows something we don't. Yeah. <laughs> so the the next one I found was uh, a largemouth bass had some kind of fish in its mouth and it killed the bass. Yes, we found a huge giant bass with Look the. Uh, what? Looks like a peacock. Stuck down his throat. Oh boy. I'm gonna go get the mine out now. <laughs> Look at this. And I think the mine sickle is still alive. Ladies and gentlemen, He's just remember alive. overeating just will stuck. kill you someday. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's Look at big. that. That's not a small fish. Holy cow. He's still alive. <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> Catch and release, I guess. Oh, and it just <laughs> swims away. That's one of those like where you you play the rap music over it, like <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean. Like with thug the, with life, thug life, yeah, <laughs> thug life. That fish killed that bass, and then it's like whatever. So this one, this one, first of all, is really cool because this guy's on a on a paddleboard, I believe. It's in very clear water, so you can right. see the structure underneath him. But he's fly fishing here. And this dude wishes he had a Guggen rod when he hooks into this largemouth. I believe it's a largemouth. Ron Daniel. <laughs> we I mean, look how clear that water is. That's nice. Welcome to Wachero Wapaka County right there. <laughs> <laughs> just snaps the rod. Got we gotta do it. We gotta do it. That's hand reel it. <laughs> what does he say here at the end? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Let's go. So this one it rolls right into the next video again. So this one I thought was really cool too. These guys are obviously in Canada walleye fishing and this is like a orca whale hunting um uh, baby seals what this walleye what they do here larry's got a lori he's got a northern on his no he had a northern Watch. on his walleye let's see if he oh! 
Oh, get it again, <laughs> man! <laughs> How awesome is that? I got it on film. Oh, man. That pike comes out of the oh, water twice. Awesome, dude. You're going to do it again. There, Why not? Why not? One more yeah, time. Again. He's trying. I mean, you're going to eat that walleye now. Come on, baby. Hit it one more yeah, time. I guess he's done. He's Hit it one more time. I don't remember if he does it again. I got it that. all on film, too. Yeah, it looks like that's, that's it. That's it. You can, yeah. yeah. So I got a story about that. I'm sure many other people have had that same kind of thing encounter, but I have I was fishing in a lake with my best friends in high school. Right. Hooked into a bluegill, and I had a northern. Hit the bluegill, and right. I, ca I caught the northern with the bluegill. It was like the f I didn't even have a hook in that northern, but it was just had its mouth right around that bluegill. Yep. So it's intense, man. Yeah. Smallmouth bass do that all the time. I've caught plenty of smallmouth in, in clear water like that. And they, it's like they school up. That there, this must be create a free a feeding frenzy. Right. I remember I was on a trip in northern Michigan with uh, my best friend and my brother. Right. And we're in a canoe. I hook into a nice smallie, and we're drifting, and we get close to shore. And I'm looking down. There's probably another three, four pounder swimming next to mine. So I tell my brother over. I'm like, dude, dude, get over here. And he throws next to my fish. The other smallmouth eat it. And now we caught a double. And it was it was freaking awesome. That's just so. insane. Absolutely so that insane. I'm, I, you know what I'm saying though, it reminds me of uh, Shark Week, the Great Whites. When yeah, they, when they chum the water and yeah, get them in there. What do they do? They send that uh, that seal looking uh, decoy out, decoy out, and that yeah. Great Whites just surface like that. That's what that pike did. So, all right, so this next now one here. Now we're out of the fishing world for a couple, and we're into a bear attack. Now this one is quite popular. Mark showed me this one a while ago. I don't again like I think this guy is spot and stalking. He might be in British Columbia or something like that. He's hiking along some roads. A lot of this is a popular way of, from what I've seen on television. Right. And, and what you don't realize is this dude has a bow, but it's a traditional bow. It's right. a recurve. So this one's quite intense too. These bear attacks it makes me maybe not want to go bear hunting. <laughs> Again, if there's any swearing, I apologize. And it, I mean, just it's a bear attack, guys. It's a bear attack. It's gonna happen. Man. I know, but it's <laughs> not. Again, like we want this to be a family environment, and we apologize. So, I, I, I believe he's spotting. If you look, I think you can see the bear on the road there. Oh, I see it right there. There it right is, right dead center. Yep, <clears throat> it's just off the road. I mean, this is GoPro footage again, so that bear is probably closer than what it appears. Just like in your your mirrors on your vehicle. Yeah, that's 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 pretty close for comfort. He's getting he's getting closer yet. I don't know how picky this guy is. If that's me, I'm shooting that bear. Before Unless he's goes. not bear hunting, but just, just the camera, you know, there's a bear there. Yeah, he's worried about the the moisture that's on there. To me, that would be uh, last of my worries, right? Urine. So that's <laughs> a that's <laughs> that's the thing about these bear hunts, though. Is I mean, if you're hunting bear with a bow, bring a Gosh dang handgun along. Oh my god. Get your mace. Get your handgun. You get attacked by a bear. I don't think the DNR is going to care that you shot it in the face. <laughs> right. Well, especially if you have footage to back it up. He drops the arrow. Oh man. This is like a movie right here where they, you know, they purposely do that. They drop the camera and all you can hear is it in the background. Right. I mean, so that obviously wasn't a very big bear, so the dude was lucky. Oh, I don't know, man. Because, like, size, that was... Size aside, I, I still a dude got me. attacked by a black bear. Right. I All know. I'm saying, though, is it was obviously it's pretty small, you know, that it just didn't know what to uh, what to do, and it probably just freaked out at him just like the way he freaked out at the bear. The part that would have been interesting to see is what's happening while that bear is attacking him. I mean, obviously, we know the bear is attacking right. him, but how, how bad was it? There's one video that I couldn't find. Um, and I don't know if you included it in here, but there's a there's a bear attack video where they were in a boat on a river, like a little raft, because they're hunting, and they're on the raft, and the thing barrels out of oh, the woods. Oh, yes. Do you yes. remember that one? Yeah, that's a um, that's a Fred Eichler video where it comes charging out of the, off in during a creek or in a river. Right. And a, a bear comes hammering off the side in, uh, I think they're in Alaska or something like that. It's so, actually the same video here. But <coughs> so yeah, the mo moving on now. This one was kind of this this next one was kind of interesting to me. So it's I think it was titled like bedded buck or something sure. like that. But I I at first I'm thinking this deer is hit. Like it's 
either hit by a car or some guy hit it. This guy is like recovering his deer after he shot it. Right. But I don't think after you watch the video, I don't think this deer is wounded at all. Obviously, it's like close to fall because that deer is doesn't have velvet on. A lot of leaves on the ground too. Yeah. Yep. A little bit of color change. There yep. we go. Yeah, I, I would be a little confused. I think the deer is super confused. Yeah, that or he's just sleeping. Doesn't even know. Like, I mean, he's awake. His eyes. Are, he's moving his head. His eyes are blinking. He's sick. Could be taking Could a, be day a off CWD of work. deer. Uh oh, taking a day off of work. <laughs> just like, just chilling. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't understand this. I would be like, um, as you sit there and you look at the deer's body, like I don't see what looks like to be a wound hole at all or anything like that. Right. You just like. That's the last thing I would do to a buck in fall is walk yeah. up to it a live deer. Right. You know. That's what makes me wonder if this guy shot this deer or did something. That's why he's like trying to recover it. Right. And he stumbles upon it and it's alive yet. Right. I do have. I had something. I've had this happen to me twice where I've come upon bucks that I've shot or somebody has shot and they're still alive. Now I haven't had it to this. What is? It? Are you gonna feed it? A, are you gonna feed a corn, bro? Like, what are you doing here? Hey, little buddy. I'm your buddy. Okay. He's got camouflage on, but he just asked if it's okay. So yeah. he, he he so he doesn't even know what's going on with it. Are you okay? That's like me in nature, though. I see a little animal, and I'm just like, what? Oh, oh yep, yep, yep. What did you think was gonna happen? <laughs> so he grabs it. <laughs> what are you doing, guy? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, okay. Now, does yeah? Don't show. It. I mean, what did you think was gonna happen? Right. That, that's what I was I was waiting for it. I'm like, this deer is just chilling, and he's trying to mess with it. And yes, are you okay? Like, I get it, you know? Maybe Dude. having some compassion, it might be hurt. <laughs> I think that but guy's... at the end of the day, like, Darwin Award. <laughs> <laughs> he, like you said, he approaches it. I, he looks to me like, <laughs> I'm thinking that this story, behind, the story behind this one is this guy hit this deer, made a bad shot, whatever, is tracking it, and he comes upon it, and the deer's still alive. Right. Because I think you're right. He does appear to have camouflage on. But I, that, the fact that he says, are you okay? Right. Like, it, that just means, was he walking? Was he scouting? Right. You know, or and maybe, he just comes across his deer on the trail? Because it I looked like he was on a trail. I don't know, man. But like, that dude that dude is lucky that that was a younger deer and yeah. not a, a bigger one because his, his may have been going home a little bit different story. Yep. Now, this next video, I a bucket lister for me yep. is a pig hunt. Yep. Let's I do it. I want to do it so bad. And I told a story, I believe it was on TRS, or, uh, TRS Live, about this very similar situation where I read an article about something like this happening. Why? I I don't know. I read that article, and after that, you watch a video like this, and I don't think anybody would ever want to pig hunt again. Now, mind you, this video may be a little graphic because this guy actually shot this pig. <laughs> so if you don't want to see this pig after it's shot, I mean, close your eyes, do whatever you got to do. But this pig literally got shot, and you're going to see the arrow inside of it. But this pig's going to let me tell you. You can see the arrow. They're vicious little animals, though. Look at the arrow in that thing's side. Yeah. I mean, that's a lethal shot. They're strong. <laughs> All right, now you can stop it. So, anyways, the the guy made a lethal shot on that pig. Right. You know, he's using traditional equipment. Doesn't matter. He made a lethal shot on that pig, but that pig's last goal in life was you f that dude up. Well, you think you know. The one thing I notice is the, when you stick an animal with an arrow, you know, a lot of times, depending on what you're what you're shooting with, you know, you're going to cut right through it. That creates two holes. They're going to bleed out. Yep. But what I what I see happening is if you stick an arrow like that, it goes in there, but it keeps a wound shut or to a point. I know you got like your blades and whatnot. But right. It's still it's, it's still doing a, damage internally right, like that, but just not enough to get it down. That soon enough. video right there kind of proves the different ways that a bullet will 
do damage or right. trauma or an arrow. Because a lot of times broadheads are so super sharp right. that those animals don't, a lot of times, don't know they're hit until, right. unfortunately, you know, they expire and that's the way it goes. Where not only do the noise of the guns, but then that shock. Right, that the, the, the energy that the you get energy, hit with. The energy, I mean, they're, they're obviously there's more animals that know they're hit with a gun. <laughs> yeah. But that pig, the pigs are just mean. Yeah, he was he was not happy. I mean, I feel like you know if I got shot with an arrow, yeah, I would probably be a little I'm upset. Coming, you know? I'm coming at you, bro. <laughs> but like that's just impressive because then yeah. like that pig backs off and you can start to see the arrows doing its job and everything like that. And the blurred out footage there was the pig, unf- you know, going going through its last couple breaths. But that's insane. So I still want a pig on every <clears throat> watching yep, that no, video. Yep, no, I agree. Just I'll be out there with an AR, no bow for me. Oh, so this <laughs> this next video, Lance, that works here, gave me this one. Now this one is just one of those days. Like, dude, I'm having that day today. 2019 has been that year for me. <laughs> <sighs> things, You're not lying. When things, no, You're I don't even want to. I don't even want to get into it. 2019, I hope it's going to get better because it, it can't get a whole lot worse for me at least. Hopefully everybody else is having a great 2019. But this dude is super stoked, catches a very nice fish, and then the video <laughs> will tell you, yeah, you just you get a little complacent and sometimes when good stuff happens. So, Heavy's there. Yeah, big fish. Little tiny, little tiny baby. It's like a minnow on there, though. So it's probably a good eater. That's a nice well, that's walleye. Peter, Nathan. Yeah. No, well, I mean, he's, he's a nice pesky. Pesky. 27? No, pesky 24, but. Okay. <laughs> no, watch. What, watch close. I mean, I'd like to get a couple eaters out of this. <laughs> we'll punch this guy in the face. Put little minnows on. Oh! <laughs> 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 Look at his facial Nobody expressions. Sure. <laughs> what was that, Nate? You didn't lose a fish fritter, did you? <laughs> no, but we got okay. <laughs> there you go. That's funny. Uh, hey, that, I can ask you a simple question. Have you ever been there? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> just have one of those days. And yeah. you just you do the one you got two things and one one thing in each hand and you just you're confused. Oh, you don't know what's and happening. I, and the next and thing I, you know, one of them's gone and it's not the right thing. <laughs> that right there is karma. That dude catches a 23, 24, 25 inch walleye. He's bashing the walleye all the whole time. You know, I just want to catch like a couple eaters. I think I think he's on the on the right. You know, I've I've heard of people complaining about bigger fish, which is kind of oh, weird. But man, and simply just whoop. Good luck. See you at the bottom. So all right. So this next one. Okay, this, this is just this an is interesting just a dog. one. So was, I saw this. Somebody had shared this, a video similar to this on Instagram. Right. And I uh, posted it, whatever you want to call it. And so I just found it, found something similar. This dog climbs a wall. That's impressive. <laughs> right over. She just climbs a wall. No big deal. You know what's funny is so I had a dog growing up. That was, you would have been able to do that. Really? Yeah, I had a uh, uh, I had two pit bull lab mixes, and you know I they were they were both from the same litter, and one was the porkiest. He had the thickest face, very porky, and he was lazy as a bum, right? The other one, his brother, his name was Remington. He was the scrawniest little wiry dude ever, right? And so we used to have uh, uh, a run on our property. It was actually for horses, but we didn't have horses, so we let that be the dog run. You yep. know, think about it. You got two dogs, so you got almost an entire acre that they can run in for free. Yep. Every free. time. Yeah, for free. You normally charge your dogs to run on your property. <laughs> two ni- two ninety nine <laughs> an hour. Um, <laughs> they can run around free out there. And, you know, <laughs> only for 30 days, and then you have to pay for it. <laughs> Your subscription ends. Your subscription is ended. Would you like the uh, the free range plus? Poor, poor dogs. <laughs> poor dogs. Hey, you're, you're, you're they didn't dogs. even have jobs, man. <laughs> <laughs> but That's anyways, probably not that the funny. best part. No, it's it's funny. funny for us, but we have the worst sense of humor. I know. But anyways, no. So then this this wall. I mean, it was fenced off. 
it was about like a 10 or 12 foot fence. I mean, this was a no joke kind of fence. Yep. And it was about, it was like an acre, it was acre area about probably, you know, I'd say a hundred yards from the house or whatever. And finally, when we would, um, you know, go to let them in, they would just meet us at the door. Weirdest thing, right? So what would happen is my dog was so smart. First of all, he would clear straight jump the whole fence, just straight up jump it. Yep. And then he'd turn around and hit the latch. And then his brother would come out with him. He was the no smartest way. thing in the world. And what and kind of dogs were those again? Pitbull lab mixes. What? Yeah, and so um, I remember that because then I'd watch him. <laughs> Finally, I just said, you know what? I want to see what he's doing. How is he doing this? So I'd sit outside, you know, at the side of the house so they, could, they couldn't see me. And instead of jumping the fence, sometimes there was a shed in there. That's where we, we put, like, a water dish and everything in there for him. And he would jump clear vertical from the, from the ground to the top of the shed and then jump over the fence that way, too. That dog was insane. Like, when you came home, you'd, like, drive up to the front door, you know, big French doors. Yep. Or whatever you call them. And he would be so excited. He would just vertically jump from the ground and hit the hit his head on the ceiling. Like, that was just how he greeted you at the door. Wow. Like, that dog was so interesting. Springs. And just it was, absolute. It was Tigger. Beast. Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> right. All right. Anyways. <clears throat> so, we got a couple, uh, couple more videos. Hopefully, this is entertaining enough for people. I'm having a great time. But, yeah, this uh, is great. <laughs> It's just, I don't know if it's <laughs> worth doing another episode like this, but again. I think every once in a while we just come up with some new stuff like this. You know, it's just let's keep it funny keep and keep it, it interesting because, you know, you can, we can talk as seriously as we want to all the time, but sometimes you just need a break. Just need a break. So Tim Wells is a very accomplished uh, archer. This guy has harvested all, all kinds of stuff, loved, hated all over the world just because he's, his antics are sometimes, right. you know, a little a little off, off course, but... Here he's hunting with an Oneida or bow, Zach, a compound yep, recurve. That's what I was looking at. I'm like, you I love ooh, it. I, love I know you bow. love it. And so he shoots, I believe it's a pigeon yep. out of the air. Let's, let's see what happens. This dude's YouTube videos are insane. If you haven't watched Tim Wells' Slock Master, you need to watch his stuff. <laughs> Point. Oh, dude, man. in the head. Boom headshot. Oh, <laughs> in the head. Oh, oh, there's your Oneida Eagles. Eagles. Perfect. Little. Oh, man. Everybody's going to imagine. I mean, did you see the 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 uh, head that he had on there, though? I mean, that was. Yeah. I mean, like, that yeah, he had wild. He, but still, I mean, that's. Dude, what? still shot a pigeon. And that pigeon wasn't moving slow. No, he was flying. That pigeon oh, was. Oh, man. Haul in the mail. I've this seen those videos where people shoot trap with a bow, though. Oh, like, yeah. That's, it's that's crazy. Definitely. Th I'm telling you, like, we're not sponsored. We don't sponsor Tim Wells. I wish we. I wish he was my best friend. But this guy shoots more stuff with a bow and arrow, and now he's even changed. Now he's spearing stuff. Okay. Is he using the Adelaide? Yep. Oh. I don't know if he's killed anything with it yet, but I think he's using the Adelaide. He's spearing. He blow guns. Oh, that's... That's that guy. That's that guy. The and guy the one, the remember gun. the one we watched the pellet gun video where he puts up the blind and he's shooting all these starlings. Yep. You gotta watch the Slock Master. His show is is freaking intense. But that guy does some amazing stuff with not only a bow but all these other kinds of stuff. So right now, if anybody has not heard of uncut angling, right. you're living under a rock. Absolutely. This dude. What is his name? Do you even know his name? I don't. I always forget. He is intense. Yeah, and he's, he's from Manitoba. Yeah, he, he's from, from Canada. Up in, he, up in does, Canada. he does a really good job. But So the first one here we're going to – is he's musky fishing with a fidget spinner. Yeah, so the backstory, I don't know if he shows any – like the lure I, in this I video. I fast forward through the whole entire lure build. Right, if you want to yep. watch it, so, you can look it up. So the cool thing I just want to explain is he cuts off – every time he makes his own baits, he literally grows his hair out, and then he cuts off his own hair to use that as like a bucktail for everything he builds. So what he did is he modified, he bought a fidget spinner from the gas station or the store or whatever. No, what is it? Like Canadian uh, Tire. Canadian Tire, yeah. You it's, got like a, it's, like a, it's like a it's it's like like a Ace Hardware that we yep. have next to us. Yep, and he buys this fidget spinner. He modifies it, which I like the way that he modified it, you know, because there's holes in the in the ends. Yep. So he kind of blocks it off so it gets a good spin underwater. Yep. And then he attaches it. Uh, he puts it on his, uh, what, do you, what would you call that, like steel line or whatever. Yeah, he, it, he talks about it more in the beginning yeah. part of the video, but it's used Basically for just makes building 
bu- uh, bucktails. He's, yeah. It's used for building musky bucktails. Yep, and so then he takes his own hair, cuts it off, puts it on there, uses that, puts it all together, and then this. The, so he, he catches, I believe he. this is the second musky, or no, I think this is the first musky he catches. Here? But he's, he's casting, he talks about speed fishing and all this stuff. Now this fish, is he's in tough. figure eight mode. This fish has been following his bait a couple of times. One. Yeah, he's still here. There he is. There he See is. the he's tail? So now I gotta try some change ups. I just love this guy's voice. Fast, slow. Look at Paul's. Oh, he liked oh, that. Oh, baby. He liked that pulsing on the surface stuff. Let's see if we can get him to do that again. This guy's, these guys' videos are legit. Hey. Hi. Canada. He's right with me. Right there. This is it. Right, here we go. Got him! side! Oh, yeah. oh man! Boat side! <laughs> yeah, he's right with me. This is it. That'd be so intense. Got oh him. man! Oh, boat side! Oh, yeah! That's the, oh, the man. different angle of it. That was an exciting and long figure eight. I think he's hooked kind of funny on the outside of the face. And I. But I think this musky is like right 48 inches, dude. Just this dude lands crazy. just absolute monster musky. He's on. like, he's, that's like his specialty. I want to say is his, musky, his videos you know, are and, awesome. Yep. They are awesome. Yeah, if Come you guys want to see uh, pan optics and, awesome. and you know, we always talk about the pan optics unit. His pan optics musky Fidget videos, spinner, awesome. Musky. Those are the ones. Come yeah, on. that's the one where he's vertical jigging muskies, and you can see it eat. The, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yep. It's a nice fish. I just wanted to, I, I played the rest of the video because I want people to see, like, you can see there's fidget a fidget spinner, musky. dude. Yep. It's real. <laughs> it's real, folks. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, now that was a fun figure eight. Look at Look their that. fidget, gold. Gold that's fidget cool. spinner. That's cool. Ready? <laughs> now, it ain't hooked the best. He talks that about that in the video. He's... Big musky. He wishes you would have hooked it in the Lean lips and all that fish stuff. Here. But yeah, the haters aren't going to like. I don't even like where I hooked them in the gill cover there, but you need to get a quick measurement. Okay, jaw right against the bump board. And this musky is just a hair under 48 inches. What? That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, quick release. And we're on our way. Boom. Oh, yeah. Fidget spinner musky, dude. Amazing. That's amazing. amazing. This guy is intense. That's amazing. Dude, I like the I like the the uh, release technique after you get a big fish like that that you, that people actually pay attention, you know. When you got it. I mean, if you just toss <laughs> that fish back in there, it's not gonna yep. do so hey, hot. Yeah, but floating yep. them like that. Fidget crazy spinner. That's all it took. It's got to be dirty blonde, of course, to really make the big girls bark. That's his hair. <laughs> not ideal how she was hooked. You got a moving fish and a moving bait in close proximity, and sometimes they intersect in a not ideal way. But she was hot for it. Shows that. It's not all about one specific lure at the tackle shop that yep. you've got to spend that thirty or forty dollars. All on. right, you, that's yeah. This, he's I'll cut it. That guy's got to figure it out. He's definitely he's got to figure, figure it out. out, and good for him because I mean, in a world of saturated YouTube and everybody can do it, all that kind of stuff. Now he, this dude figured it out, and how he, and now. Granted, I'm not going to naysay, but he's in Canada, and the fishing can be a little bit different in Canada than it is here in the States. But I'm not a big-time fisherman, so maybe that's a false statement. Maybe it is. But he's got this dude's got to figure it figured out. So now does. the next couple are his. Um, so we we just saw the muskie, and then he goes into – he talks about here – Oh, he's uh, he's so busy. He doesn't get his mail much. You know, this is maybe partially set up, but the, he's mu- he's northern fishing now on a, a clear lake, which he talks about. The la- name of the lake is Clear Lake, and he uses the YouTube play button. Yep. And now this is not the first northern he catches. We fast forward quite a ways into the video, but this is the biggest northern he catches on it. And his goal was to beat a forty-one. Oh, big fish! Gotta be a big fish! Gotta be a big fish! It's all over the surface out there. Oh boy! Gotta be a big fish! It is so heavy! Oh, <laughs> it's so heavy! Stay hooked! Stay hooked! No! 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 He thinks he's the no, fish. Still got him. He's still got him! He's still oh, got my him! Goodness. Oh my goodness! Please stay hooked! Please stay hooked! Please stay hooked! It's gotta be big! Oh, please stay hooked! Please stay hooked! 
we stay hooked. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I just want to go fishing so bad after yep. watching these. All right, I'm going after work. Yeah. Tell my wife I didn't have plans that. tonight. Sorry, honey. Wow, We're going fishing. He, so <laughs> he is big. Oh but boy. He felt even bigger, and he's done. Oh. In the Ooh. net. That's Very just... tough to say. It could be 41. It could be. Are you ready for this? Ah, oh, he's hooked funny. <sighs> the YouTube play button. <sighs> okay, he's big. Look at this. <laughs> potentially 41. Potentially 42. Sorry, Dad. I think I got you here. Let's find out. Lips touching. So uh, again, oh he goodness. talks about it in the beginning Maybe of the video. He wants to try to beat his dad. He caught a 41 oh, yeah. and a half. Manitoba master angler, 42 and a half inch pike. Look at that beautiful pike. Oh God. It's tough. Because like, the cool part about Just this video is he modifies here. that. Got he got it for belly, having so over 100,000 subscribers. Yep. So then he modifies that that YouTube. Button. This just makes me want to make baits <laughs> out of just random uh, stuff. I mean, I don't know if you come to Wisconsin or you know coming into you know, and you're throwing that YouTube play button. I don't know if you're catching fish on it. Yeah, we that gotta might, have big fish first. They got. <laughs> I don't know that either. That or he's got it 100 percent figured out and how to do it. So that was again uncut angling. And so the last video again is one more of his. We're kind of we're getting to the very very end here. We got uh we we might just skip one or two videos and just play. His, but, <clears throat> so again, this is the last video. Now, this one I thought was really cool. He talks about he's at the boat launch. He's getting bait or something like that. Some guy tells him, on this lake, somebody sunk a boat on accident. He finds the boat due to his hummingbird system and yep. his all his uh, down imaging, side imaging, all that stuff. He not only finds it right here, you can see it coming onto the graph, but then he proceeds to catch some very nice crappies over it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Look at that. That's a boat, folks. That's insane. Right there. Unbelievable. Right there, you can see there's the bow. There's the stern. The bow. Yeah, baby! Yeah! <laughs> okay. Yeti buddy, we're gonna give you the waypoint. You can come retrieve your boat. I can't believe we actually found it. Right there's the waypoint of this sunken boat. If you want to come check it out for yourself, or if you are the owner of that boat and you want to come retrieve it, you may do so. I'm going to hit it with a couple more angles here, get a couple more screenshots. Oh, oh YouTube. YouTube! A commercial! No, we're done. It really didn't take that much work. We just cruised out, F back and forth, and with this side imaging, you see everything. This is just so incredible. This is a Hummingbird Helix, which is a very affordable unit. Used to Relatively be that side imaging was only available on the most expensive sonars, but now it is available on so many fish finders. Coming back up to these waypoints, it switch goes. over to side imaging. It should be on our left side right there. Look at that. Bango. Oh, and those white speckles, see the little white speckle there and the white speckles are on the back? Those are very likely to be fish living inside of this boat. Yes! There it is, right below us. I'm gonna throw out the marker buoy. You can tell it's right below us when it marks on both sides of the side imaging. So you can see it on the bottom there. Zach, like you gonna put this on a red shark? You gonna get it. side imaging and all that stuff? On your... You're gonna have to, I don't know where I'm gonna mount it, but. Oh. <laughs> you know, any point of interest in a lake that has this many crappies is likely to hold a couple, maybe not a bunch, maybe not bunch. big ones. A couple but of them. There should be something there. Here we go. Okay, so yeah, after he catches his right first one, you can pause it. But and on the graph, there's the boat off the sides below us on both sides of the boat, so we're right over top of it. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? <laughs> I can't believe we found this. Fish on immediately. Bam! Fish on immediately! Oh yeah. Crappie. Thank ya! It's a nice crappie. Nice. Yeah, baby. Immediately. Over a boat. How cool <laughs> is that? This crappie <clears throat> was using the sunken boat that the guy at the gas station told us about. That's about a 12-inch fish. They get bigger. 
And if we got this one that fast, we'll probably see bigger. Look, I mean, a that's a four inch jackal cross tail. <laughs> I'm gonna let this one go. All right, you can pause this one. Catching crappies over a boat. So again, like Zach, that's what we—that's what we gotta compete with, bro. I know. We gotta figure it out. We and gotta uh, figure it out. I, I think I have to learn how to catch fish first, and then we'll have to go from there. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. So we got two more videos left. Now the next one is our boy Travis Manson with Smallmouth Crush. Now we go right in from a sunken boat to a stuck boat on some rocks. Now, I had put in here, Zach, I got this one kind of broken up a little bit because yep. it's like a 30-minute video. Yep. But um, if this, I don't know the whole entire – he talks – Manson talks about the story about this one. This boat got hung up on the rocks. Somehow Travis and his buddy are uh, beckoned or, you know, called on to try to get this boat off. <laughs> By the time they get this boat back to the launch, it's <clears throat> it's a – it's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, actually, it's not garbage because the guy who owned the boat commented on the comments and said that this is now his backup boat and he still plans on using it because uh. he said it's an absolute beast of a boat. Nah. -uh. Yeah. The boat sinks. What? Watch it. All right, let's watch it. That's, we're watching it. So they pull up to the boat. Look at that thing. This dude's boat, too, that are on the, the, what is this, the Susquehanna River or whatever? Yeah. That boat that they have, the one that's actually functional right now, is like a jet boat. Wow, how are we going to get this off the rocks? Is it worse or better than you thought, Joe? Uh, I don't know. I guess it's about as what I expected. It's going to be a challenge. Joe. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, listen to that current. That's a ripping. Oh, that's a fish rod. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, that that river's got a ton. So as you can see, it's uh, it's in a tricky spot. Joe was right, man. There's a lot of current. A lot of rapids, a lot of fast-moving water down this little chute here. And uh, we're just trying to form a game plan. We got to lighten the load first and foremost. We got to get all the batteries out, trolling motor, anything we can <laughs> oh. to lighten this boat up. Oh, Jared was almost fell backwards live. <laughs> so they're um, lightening the load up. So then they fast-forward, they get a cable to it, all that kind of stuff, wedge it. Uh, they send Manson back to the rock. So where we're at right now is they have a, a cable tied to it. They're on shore with a uh, come along. They're <laughs> pulling on this boat. Manson hops back on the rock, pushes it in the water. Go ahead. We got her. Yes. Smallmouth crush. If you haven't watched this, this guy's <laughs> nuts too. Manson's nuts. We've had him on TRS Live. Talked to him at Bassmaster Classic. You partied with him, Zach. I did. <laughs> I don't know if his audio was just bad right here. So they got it off, and it looks like the boat's functional at this point. That boat just sounds badass. Kind of liked it in there. How deep is it? Like three feet. Perfect. So now I'm starting to pull the boat back. All right. Oh, no. That thing just sounds awesome, dude. Right? And I'm left all by myself. <laughs> These guys get too nervous. <laughs> You could, have, you could have drove this boat all the way back. It is taking <laughs> us some serious water. You could have drove it back, but it's so taking us some serious <laughs> water. And uh, try to pump out the water. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> but we'll see. I stumbled upon another, another boat. boat. This, this Susquehanna is... 
claiming boats left and right. So they fast forward. They fly back to shore. They're going to try to village pump to pump out all the water that's coming in the boat. Cause it's <laughs> now it, this, from here, I think it, this, I think I have it set where it plays from here to pretty much the end of the video. Right. But go Thank ahead. Oh. Oh. I can't. The, uh, are you serious? In the comments, the dude said this boat's still good. Potentially. Take a look. Watch when they get it back to shore. There's no way this boat's still good. <laughs> That's hilarious. Perfect music to it. Look at that. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know if the motor's gonna work anymore. <laughs> we got a sinker. <laughs> We're like 200 yards from the ramp, and it decided to go under. Well, hold on. We'll see what happens here. Now we made her 50 yards away. <laughs> what are you pulling in, dude? What are you pulling in right now? Oh, wait, there it is. Caught a real big one. Yep, you're hey, boat, reeling it in. Your boat's supposed to be on the yeah. other side. It's one of those fancy newfangled upside down boats. Yeah, yeah. Hipsters love them. Yeah, let's talk about down imaging. <laughs> What's wrong with putting it on the hitch and driving it up the bank? Yeah. Where do you want There's this? There's an eye bolt on the back side above that pod. <laughs> These guys worry too much, he says before. <laughs> Oh, we'll get there. Go for it. Go for a swim. <laughs> we'll get her. We'll get her, he says. <laughs> All right, now what? No. Nah. I mean, it's not, there ain't much holding it. There ain't much holding the boat together at this point either. I mean, what are you worried about? I wonder if yeah, there was yeah. fines attached to this boat being out there. What is going on, Crunch City? Ripping it apart. <laughs> you... What do we need? Oops. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> okay. Did I, I just had it quick in there. Okay. It's gotta be almost. The part I just want to see is if you can find it is where they just get the, they get it out, and you can see the condition of it. He ain't using it as a backup boat. Oh, oh, biffed it. There it is. <laughs> the top of the motor is gone. <sighs> That's Manson. Sadness. All right, you can wrap this one up. So that's pretty intense. So let's just get right into the last one. The last, last one is just, again, this is another video that I shared to TRS Outdoors the other day. Something we both want Dude, in our lives. Dude, these things look awesome. 
He's look awesome. I love it right there where the ice is like a wave, right? I'll take three, please. <laughs> Just whip it and don't. Man. Look at that. Yes, please. I'll take two. Imagine fishing on the river in that drive by. Right. Look at it. We, we had talked about stability-wise. I mean, after this, you could wrap it up, but... There you go. You can. Those things look awesome. That's insane. They look awesome. So. Oh boy. That's an hour and a half of us watching YouTube videos. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was different. <laughs> <laughs> boy. So, I don't know, man. That's yep. The wonderful world of YouTube. The wonderful world. Man. I can understand why people are just straight up addicted to it. Yeah, because you just keep clicking on the sidebar and you just, just see, oh, what's this? Oh, what's, what's this? That one? Oh, what's, what's this? That what? Illuminati confirmed. What? <laughs> right. Right. No, absolutely. So wow, that, was, that was pretty crazy. So we're gonna wrap it up. I mean, um, that's nuts. So, uh, <laughs> I I like that. You just don't even know where to go with it because there's like that was the way the the amount just, of videos yep. we just watched in that hour and a half. Yep, it seems like it was blazing fast, but we yeah. covered. I couldn't believe it. All of a sudden, I looked up and we haven't even started on the YouTube videos yet, and it was like 35, 40 minutes in. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, just the product videos. Yeah, product videos alone. So and and nobody nobody won. I lost a bet to myself. Just a four ten m was tipped over. But anyways, cool everybody. Thanks again. This is uh, TRS Live. Brian yeah. was out of house today, so we just sat here around and we watched YouTube videos. Hopefully, absolutely. We didn't get any chores done. Nope. Nope. Gonna be, you're gonna be grounded. Grounded. <laughs> Yeah, but, no, but uh, so this was episode 29. Next episode is going to be episode number big three zero. Three zero. Turning 30. 30. On Tuesday. We're going to have to think of something special for the 30th. That'll be Tuesday at noon. Um, then on Thursday, we got Dan um, Elsner coming on from Get Bit Baits. He's the owner of that, so he's going to be in studio talking about tube fishing and all other types of plastics. For smallies and large, Talking plastics. Talking plastics. Brian will be back in the studio again for that kind of stuff. So um, we'll be back here live on Tuesday. Not sure what yet. We want to do a gun segment again, but the wall is coming down next week. Tearing down the wall. The wall is Somewhere coming down. Somewhere David Hasselhoff is dancing in a car right now. Yeah, I hear you. Down the wall. I hear you, man. It's, it's going to be an exciting day, so we're going to... Can we graffiti the wall before it comes down? I told, I told Lance, I said, I want to be the first one to knock a hole in that thing. Right, yeah. Just grab a sledge and just knock a hole in it. So Do it up. <clears throat> again, we'll tag some of the products that we spoke about. Otherwise, you can um, watch them all on here again. You can watch it on TRS Outdoors. Right. You can watch it on YouTube. and the you, you YouTube. Okay, man, yeah. maybe we'll do a video or somebody will do a video eventually of us doing a YouTube video. Yeah. Your mind is blown. Mind blown. So we had talked All about right. the 410 from Mossberg, the TSS ammunition, the Guggen rod. This this Guggen squad rod, catfish. dude, is going to... Catfish combo right, right there. Right, let's, let's sell a pile of them. We got the Shimano DS. We didn't talk about the... DC. React, no, oh, DS, I said DS. DC. DC. It's DC. We didn't talk okay. about the React sites, but uh, we'll get to that one on a different time. So, Zach, you got any good thing? Hey, I'm glad you're... You're active and talking to Yeah, we're b I'm back here. Could have done it without you, buddy. Yeah, it would have been really awkward without me. It would have been <laughs> if it was just Matt sitting in a room. <laughs> Matt, Matt in talking room, to a microphone talking about that's not even working. <laughs> You're, there's, I think there was a South Park episode about that, you know, where you'd just be sitting there talking about everything else going on in the corner here in your little camera. I'm uh, I'm ready to <laughs> I'm ready to go on with the rest of my Thursday. So yeah. Well, cool. Let's All wrap right. her on up, and yeah. we'll be back here again on Tuesday at Nooner. So have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe. Be safe. And hopefully, you know, get some YouTube videos going. Yeah. Get some Film some videos. stuff. Send us some stuff. Also, now, now good luck out there, because it's going to get nice and warm out there. So, uh, Is it? Yeah, it's supposed to get a little nice and warm. When? I heard they're calling for chances yeah. of snow and sleet. Like two days ago, it was supposed to get warmer. They don't know. The, weather, don't. the weather I'm... 
straight up thinking that it's just gotten worse over the past 10 years. They don't know. They don't know anything. They don't They know. just guess. All it's right. like gambling. Anyways, ladies it's and gentlemen, time. thank you again for watching, and we will see you next time. See you later.